The Lord be with you. And God's blessings on your day. Thank you for joining me for this devotion as we continue our look at the armor of God. You know, the tramp of soldiers' feet and the clanging of their armor as they march or walk up and down the street two by two or however it is they used to do in Paul's day was probably a very familiar sound. For you and me, it's not. Uh, and yet, there's power in the armor of God. Well, first of all, because God says so. But there's power in his armor for us, for you and for me to stand in our day. Because what we hear in our ears, Paul reminds us, and he will, as I read again for you, Ephesians 10, uh, excuse me, Ephesians 6, and I'm going to go all the way through 14 this time. Paul reminds us of just who the enemy is of all of us, a common enemy. Let's get back into it. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So that's the second piece. Belt of truth last time, and now the breastplate of righteousness. The, the breastplate that would guard important organs. Of course, most important, your heart. You may be able to sustain and survive a wound to an arm or something like that but something that hits you right at your heart that can be deadly so the breastplate is in place guarding our heart i was reminded and i want to let this be for you and for me both a baptismal reminder because the words in our liturgy and the rite of baptism have this fairly Soon, at the beginning of a baptism service, we say to the one being baptized, Receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Paul calls it a breastplate of righteousness. Once again, baptismal memory Baptismal power comes to you and to me again with this portion of the armor of God. Because, because at the end of the little baptism service then, we give the child, we give the person a little white cloth. And we say to remind you that Christ has taken away your sin and put upon you his perfect righteousness. So shall you in faith ever stand before him. So it's the breastplate, it is the declaration of righteousness that Paul is talking about here. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, that righteousness, that righteousness that we have in Christ. It's not my righteousness, and it isn't yours. It's the righteousness of Christ, the righteousness that Paul knew and wrote something about and that Luther also knew and, of course, wrote something about. Luther always thought the righteousness of God was something that he had to earn, that he had to accomplish, that he had to produce, and then present to God in the hopes that God would accept and love him. And Luther, of course, found out that that's never the case. That can't be and is impossible. The righteousness of God, as he talks about in Romans chapter 1, is that gift of God that God declares us righteous for the sake of Christ. That's Romans 1, verses 16 and 17. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God for the salvation of all. For in it a righteousness from God is revealed by faith. 
So that righteousness, again, is the righteousness that you and I have that guards our hearts. And, and I thought of something as I was getting ready for this devotion, that it guards it, obviously, from attacks from the outside, that breastplate keeping our hearts safe from a false righteousness or, or somebody attacking, whatever. It reminds us of who we are in Christ, but it also protects us from the inside as well. John is writing, so I'm switching authors here for just a second. John writes in his first letter, in 1 John chapter 3, we read this, By this we shall know that we are of the truth, and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. So uh, when my heart gets a little proud and I think, oh, I got this righteousness stuff down on my own, or when I look into the mirror of the law and I realize how I have failed again, I have fled again, I have fallen again, and I am bereft, I am guilty, I am repentant, my heart, though it may seem like it's dying, here comes the breastplate of Christ's righteousness to reassure, to protect, to strengthen me so that I can stand, stand firm in God with the belt of truth and with the breastplate of righteousness. I invite you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our righteousness, that we have been clothed by you. Bless us now as we continue to trust in you and as we continue to stand in your might and shine your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's rich and good blessings to you this week and on into the weekend and opportunity for worship. And, God willing, I look forward to seeing you again.